I want to bring in Paul Schiff Berman. He is a professor and a former clerk for the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Paul, in listening to those remarks, I was struck by one question, and that was, what motivated Justice Ginsburg to do the work that she did? Well, she loved her work more than anything in the world, except maybe her grandkids and opera. Those were really the three things that she did uh, throughout her uh, life. And, um, you know, I think she felt as if she was part of a long lineage. One of the things that struck me, and I think it's absolutely right in those remarks, is that she was not a judicial revolutionary. She moved step by step, very incrementally, and she thought that's how societal change happens. It happens step by step if it's going to endure. And uh, so I think she just saw every single new case, every single new task, as a step on a path, and she focused on that. And I think that gave her the strength to continue through all of these bouts of cancer. And she surely tried with every fiber of her being uh, to make it uh, to January uh, so that uh, the uh, new election could dictate the future of the court. Yeah. And noticeably absent today, the president, he was there yesterday with the first lady. Um, and he was met with with jeers. And some people, Paul, felt that that was disrespectful because it was over the body of RBG. What, what did you make of that extraordinary moment? Well, I think that we are at an inflection point for American democracy. Um, we have uh, a president who uh, did not win a majority of the votes originally. We have a Republican-controlled uh, Senate where the 53 Republican senators actually had fewer people vote for them collectively than the 47 Democratic senators because of the way the Senate is constituted. And to push through this uh, nomination as they are planning to, in addition to having uh, taken a nomination away from President Barack Obama, who did win a majority of the votes, means that we have the potential for a, a minority faction of American politics to dictate and lock in partisan advantage uh, for decades. Um, I don't think that a constitutional democracy can survive that for long. Uh, and so this is a, uh, a grave moment in American history. And I think Justice Ginsburg saw that. And when she said her fervent wish was that she not be replaced until after the election, it wasn't a partisan wish, although I'm sure she has preferences as to who will win the election. It was an institutional wish. It was a wish that the U.S. Supreme Court would retain institutional legitimacy, um, and that's what's being undermined. The entire legitimacy of the constitutional democracy is being threatened by the president and the Republican Senate majority's actions. Uh, and so uh, emotions are high, and I'm not at all surprised. Uh, and I really fear for where we're headed as a country. And yet the president doubted those words. Um, he questioned whether or not she did, in fact, say that her dying wish, her dying desire to have her replacement put off until there was a new president. Anyone who knows Justice Ginsburg knows that the sentence that was dictated is absolutely prototypically her elocution. The idea of a fervent wish, that's the kind of language she used all the time. Uh, and my guess is, as with everything else she wrote, um, she probably uh, edited it, thought about it, figured out exactly the words she wanted to use and not use. Uh, and it certainly is a sentence 
that has the ring of authenticity to me. And I think the idea that she did not uh, dictate it or that the family is somehow lying is just another of the ludicrous claims that have no basis in fact that the president of the United States spews multiple times a day. We're watching members of the family and colleagues, politicians, walking by the casket. Justice Ginsburg, again making history on this day as the first woman and the first Jewish woman to receive the honor of lying in state at the U.S. Capitol. There will be a private ceremony next week for her, and she will be laid to rest at Arlington. So, Paul, a final thought from you as we see people um, paying their respects. What, how do you pay your respects? In, in your mind, could you say it out loud for us as a closing thought? Well, the clerks uh, were all came to the U.S. Supreme Court uh, when uh, her body was first received at the court uh, two days ago, and we all uh, lined up uh, on the steps of the Supreme Court uh, and then stood in vigil over her body uh, over the last couple of days. And as I stood there, I thought, you know, this group of clerks that were all standing there, you know, uh, over a hundred of us, um, you know, we are mourners, but we are also an army. We are people who can carry forward her mission and all of the work that she was doing, which again, is incremental, it's step by step, and it's focused on the horizon. And we can do that, and so can all Americans, and anyone in the world who believes in a more embracive vision of how politics should work, one that's not about locking in partisan advantage, one that's not about excluding people but one that expands and expands the idea of who we the people are. And that is a mission that she pursued her whole life and that we need to pursue for our whole lives. And as America hits a point that uh, I never thought we would hit, where it's not at all clear that we can survive as a country, um, we need to rededicate ourselves to that vision, to Justice Ginsburg's vision of how the world could be. And so justice, justice shalt thou pursue is a mission we all can pursue. Paul Schiff Berman, you have been incredibly generous, generous with your time. We really appreciate you being with us this morning and uh, what a blessing you've had in your life to be able to work and know Ruth Bader Ginsburg.